All right, changing the tone a bit here. Colorado is thrust back into the national spotlight again this week as ABC News prepares to air an interview tonight with the mother of one of the Columbine High School killers. Number seven investigator Tony Kovaleski is here to talk about this with me. You have talked with the families um, from Columbine, of the Columbine victims, and this is still just so painful, not only for them, but for really so many in the community, Tony. Well, you know, Teresa, you, you know this story well, and, and it is still painful after nearly 17 years. Tonight's interview with Sue Klebold has, has already created a tremendous amount of response and reaction. Some parents telling us this week that it may be actually too difficult to watch and, and saying that it's just really stirred things up again. And, and there's also a powerful reaction from Anne Marie Hochhalder. She was injured, paralyzed from the bullets fired on that April day back in 1999. Last night on Facebook, she sent this open letter to Sue Klebold. Anne Marie wrote, I think it's appropriate that the program that you're appearing on is named 2020. Hindsight is truly 2020, and I am sure you agonized over what you could have done differently. She also wrote, I have no ill will toward you. Just as I would not want to be judged by the sins of my family members, I hold you in that same regard. In tonight's interview with Diane Sawyer, Sue Klebold talks about parenting her son and the question of missed signals. Part of the shock of this was, was that learning that what I believed and how I lived and how I parented was um, an invention in my own mind, that it, it was a completely different world that he was living in. Sue Klebold sent letters to parents and the surviving victims in the months following the shooting. Anne Marie acknowledged that letter in her Facebook post last night. She also said, it's been a rough road for me with many medical issues because of my spinal cord injury and intense nerve pain, but I choose not to be bitter towards you. She concluded, I have forgiven you and only wish you the best. Clearly a message of forgiveness from one of the surviving victims of the Columbine shooting, but I can tell you it's not everyone that's responding that way to tonight's interview. I have talked face to face and on the phone with many of the parents of the 12 students who did not return home from school on that day. Some question Sue Klebold's motives. They want to know why she is talking now nearly 17 years after the shooting and why it didn't happen immediately or five years ago or 10 years ago. The pain has not gone away. Tonight at 6, we talk with Diane Sawyer and get her answer to that question of timing. But uh, a really powerful interview, 17 years in the making. You know, and I think, Tony, it's important for folks to understand, too, that we understand how hard this is for these families. It's not easy for us to approach them, and yet we want to give them the opportunity, if they want to, to, to respond because this really... This really reopens an old wound for a lot of people and a wound that probably will never heal. Well, uh, great points. R rule number one is reporters. We treat people like we want to be treated. And we have reached out to family members over the past week and a half saying, would you like to come in, get an early read, get an early watch of what's happened? Right. But, and I've also asked them, what's the responsible way to, to address this? Yes. Parents need to respond. How do you want to respond? Everybody mourns differently. Many are still dealing with it. And, and you know, that's what's the important part of this tonight. I think Sue Klebold's come out and, and she's offered her insight. Parents, some want to hear it, others right. simply saying they can't watch it. Well, we understand that for sure. Tony, thank you so much. We're looking forward to your pieces tonight as well. That interview, by the way, with Sue Klebold airs tonight at 9 on 2020. That's right here on Denver 7.